Hello everyone, this is a presentation on polygons, polytopes, and symmetry groups. This presentation was made for MAS 6318 Advanced Algebra and Geometry class, and this is recorded on December 5th, 2022. The group members are myself, Nicole England, we have Oscar Robinson, and Shahina Tabasum also on the team. So let's talk a little bit about ourselves. As I said, my name is Nicole England, and I'm a Master of Science in Teaching Mathematics student. We have Oscar Robinson, which is a Master of Science in Teaching Mathematics student also. And we have Shahina Tavisum, which is a Master of Science in Curriculum and Instruction student. This is a summary of everything we're going to be talking about in the presentation today. We're going to be talking about polygons, the definition, examples, and a GeoGebra exercise. We're going to be talking about polytopes, definition, examples, and an exercise in GeoGebra. And we're going to be talking about symmetry groups, the definition, and examples in two and three dimensions. So let's get started with the polygons. So polygons are plain figures with at least three straight sides. These are considered two-dimensional figures, and they have sides, angles, and vertices. So a side is each one of those straight lines that form the polygon. The vertex is where two sides meet, and the angle is the measurement of in between the two sides. So on the right side, we also have examples of things that are not polygons, so anything with a circular side, like a circle or like the yellow figure that has circular sides are not considered polygons. Straight lines are also not considered polygons. Polygons are made of straight lines, but lines are not polygons. And also three-dimensional figures, such as a cube. So these are some of examples. Regular polygons have equal sides and equal angles. So we have over there a square. All the sides in the square are equal length and all the angles are equal measurement. We have a pentagon, which has five sides, all the sides the same length, all the angles the same measurement. And we have a decagon, which has 10 sides, uh, same thing, all the sides measure the same. We also have irregular polygons. So irregular polygons, they do not not have to have equal sides or equal angles. So as you can see, for example, on the, red, um, on the red maroon figure, not all the sides are the same length and not all the interior angles are the same measurement. So let's do uh, polygons on GeoGebra. So if you're trying to draw a regular polygon on GeoGebra, it is really easy because you have a tool called Regular Polygon Tool. And by selecting two vertices, it will give you an option to put how many sides you want, and it will just create it um, for you. Or you can just uh, have the Polygon Tool and just select all the vertices that you want, and it will create a polygon for you. Or the last option to draw a polygon on GeoGebra would be to select just vertices. And then uh, with the line segment, you can uh, combine, uh, you can create lines in between the vertices to create a polygon. So let's talk about polytopes. So polytopes are geometric objects with flat faces. They are basically each face has to be a polygon. Um, so nothing with curves or circles or anything like that. They're three-dimensional polyhedra, and there are n number of dimensions. So they're called the n polytope. They have to have planar faces, which are straight. So as we said, the faces are made out of polygons, um, and we have edges and we have vertices. So some of the polytopes examples that we have here on the screen, um, some of them are regular, some of them are irregular. So the first one is a uh, regular dodecahedron. It's made out of pentagons. Um, and as you can see, all the faces are exactly the same. But on the one in the middle of the screen, the second one, 
it's uh, made out of pentagons and hexagons and it's called a truncated isocahedron um the third one on the right side on the top is a cube and then as you can see on the bottom um the one on the bottom right is a uh, pentakis isocahedron so it's made out of uh equilateral and isosceles triangles so it's technically not regular even though it might look like it might be and then you have the one on the bottom left which is made out of um it's also not a regular um polytopes so with this being said we're gonna i'm gonna pass it on to oscar he's gonna continue the presentation um hello everyone Dimension is a great reference point as a measure of topology, a conceptual or visual complexity of a geometric object. The relationship between higher and lower dimensions can be interpreted by dragging an opposing direction. For example, if you take a point and drag it either to the left or to the right, you see a line. Arbitrarily, if we take a line and drag to the left or to the right, you now see a box. Polytopes are the generalization of 3D polyhedra to any number of dimensions in. Regular polytopes have the highest degree of symmetry of polytopes. There are five platonic solids with faces as regular polygons and three-dimensional angles. The tetrahedron, the cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron Euler's formula, F plus V equals E plus 2, applies to three-dimensional figures. This formula does not hold well with four-dimensional figures. There are three primary groups of regular polytopes which occur in any number of dimensions regular tetrahedron and the equilateral triangle are in the simplices group the cube and square are in the measure polytopes or hypercubes the hyperdimension refers to the fourth dimension or higher cross polytopes or orthoplexes include the regular octahedron and the square group. Of the five platonic solids, the first that we will explore, the tetrahedron. The tetrahedron has four regular triangles that represent its faces, four vertices, and six edges. Three triangles meet at each vertex. Here we have a two-dimensional net of the tetrahedron, representing the relationship of the four regular triangles. In GeoGebra, you are able to construct using a three-dimensional view, the tetrahedron. The next figure is the cube. The cube has six faces. Eight vertices, 12 edges, 
three squares meet at each vertex, as you can see. The two-dimensional net of the cube representing the six squares. And to the right, uh, what the figure looks like in GeoGebra. The octahedron has eight regular faces that are triangles that are equilateral, equiangular, six vertices, 12 edges, and at each vertex, uh, four triangles meet. Here you can see uh, at vertex D, we have four triangles, one, two, three, and then on the back side, four. Uh, this is the two-dimensional net for the octahedron. Next, we have the dodecahedron, 12 pentagonal faces that are equilateral and equiangular, 20 vertices, 30 edges. At each vertex, there are three regular pentagons that meet. Here you can see in that design our two-dimensional net. The icosahedron. Now what's unique about these two is if you think about what we just saw, the number of faces um, these essentially were the same, it's just they're set up different. Uh, this one has 20 regular faces, 12 vertices, and 30 edges. Five triangles meet at each vertex. Here we have our two-dimensional net and the three-dimensional figure in GeoGebra. In Euclidean geometry, the four polytope is a four-dimensional polytope. However, because we live in a three-dimensional space, the four polytope cannot be seen in 3D space, but a visualization can be achieved through perspective projection. Now, uh, in our course, we had a couple activities dealing with perspective drawings and projection. There are 16 regular four polytopes. And in the mid 19th century, a little bit of history, Swiss mathematician Ludwig Schlafly was the first to describe convex regular four polytopes. In the world of geometry, we have reference to polygons as being convex or concave. Uh, convex where your vertices are pointing to the exterior of the figure, concave, where you have one uh, that points, one or more that points to the interior. Now, I'm going to explain how to create a three-dimensional polytope in GeoGebra. Uh, you wanna start by placing a point a and a point B in GeoGebra using the 3D graph. Next, you're going to select a regular polygon, uh, your choice, whether it's uh, uh, three vertices, four vertices, or five, representing a regular triangle, square, or pentagon. 
then use one of the platonic solid commands. Now there's a couple different variations uh, for using the commands or you could also use the tool to create. And then you will animate. So here we will try to show We have our 3D graph. Uh, we're going to select on the graph. Point A. Uh, let's make point B. But just to show you with those first two points, you can establish Now we choose a regular polygon. So if you want, at this stage, you now can choose three vertices, four vertices, five vertices, whichever. Uh, we will go with four since it's already there. We will choose, so why don't we do this? Let's select a cube and choose those points. There's our cube. with a blue. So once you have that, so now let's create a net for this figure. There's our net. So we've essentially gone through. Now the really neat thing about this, you can rotate uh, as you choose to see. Uh, let's go back. And over here, the slider, uh, we can animate by right clicking and you can see that open and close. Uh, I thought this was a pretty awesome experience and opportunity exploring uh, polytopes this way. GeoGebra has a lot of cool features and this is one of them. So of course To build a multi-dimensional hypercube in four dimensions, basically what you want to do is look at a lower dimension. So in order to see a four-dimensional figure, uh, the idea is to project its shadow into three dimensions. So this is essentially what you're seeing. And this is a multi-dimensional, an example of a multi-dimensional hypercube that is in 5D. And I found this GeoGebra app by 
Evan Eaton. So here you can see by adjusting the sliders, you can produce this fifth dimension cube. So pretty cool. And now Shahina with symmetry. <clears throat> symmetry which is um, operation or transformation that maps the figure onto itself for Euclidean's a uh, group of isometries are distance preservers distance preserving transformations such as um, reflections rotations translations or it may be a combination of either or, or combinations of all of them. The symmetry groups are a group of permutations on a set. So examples of symmetry groups are this, the, this permutation set of a, a regular tetrahedrons. Permutation notation, um, it's an arrangement of objects in a particular way or order. While dealing with uh, permutation, one should concern about the selection as well as arrangement. In short, ordering is very much essential in permutations. In other words, the permutation is considered as an ordered combination. The formula or the notation for the permutation is NPR which equals N over N minus R. Symmetries of a square. So if we do um, clockwise rotations, so this, this is going to be the symmetry of the um, square, and if we do axial flips, we will have a uh, perpendicular bisectors and there going to be another kind of axial flips which is going to be like that when we use the diagonal bisectors these are the rota um, notations for permutations for the um, square so this is mu mu1 These are the references that we used for our um, project. And thanks everyone for watching our presentation.